Welcome everyone. Welcome to class number two of our series with Yannick Van Dorn on electroculture. Today we're going to be exploring the, uh, the uses of the atmospheric antenna. Atmospheric antenna. Welcome Yannick. Yes, so welcome. Thank you Angela for inviting me to do this presentation and thank you for all the participants to be there. Um, so it's the first uh, presentation about this in English that I will do. Um, so you see on this picture uh, some uh, old uh, images on, on the right and in the middle of atmospheric antennas. It's, it's one of the first techniques used in electroculture, also one of the first that is known in electroculture that we will talk about. And uh, and you see also a picture on the left, uh, the nice picture um, uh, that comes from um, uh, that I made with with uh, with someone, and uh, it's uh, like a kind of copy from an old book. Uh, also, uh, it's, uh, it's it's different ways you can use an atmospheric antenna. You see in those pictures. There's the one on the left where you connect uh, to a wire that is connected to the plants like uh, like uh, grapes or wine uh, yards then in the middle you see an atmospheric antenna that is connected with wires in the soil um to uh, it's to help to spread the energy uh, in in a bigger area in the soil and then at the right, you see an atmospheric antenna that is just close to a tree and with a wire going uh, through uh, to the roots of the tree or, or close to the tree. Um, the image right is important uh, to understand because a lot of people ask, why uh, do, don't you put the antenna in the tree? We will see why. It's because um, the tree is also an antenna. And <clears throat> if you put the, the, the antenna in the tree, then it will take the energy in place of the tree. You, you will take the energy of the tree. And if you, you put the antenna just close, but, but not in the tree, then you will give him energy. It's uh, completely different. Uh, and that's very important to understand. I will, I, I can explain it more in detail with the drawings that we will see uh, later. Um, yeah, that's very important because if you want, if you think to do good to put an antenna in the tree, uh, you can have good intentions, but the problem is that you will harm your tree uh, if you put it in the tree and, th and that's not what you want. <laughs> So uh, that's very important to know. So we will um, see a little bit about the history, but there's so much to say about history of such kind of antennas that I will make it short. <laughs> um, uh, we will also see in history why it was used as lightning rods, but also as protection against hail. Uh, against, uh, I forgot the S. <laughs> and uh, we will see some scientific uh, principles and operation, modes of installation. So that's the practical side. How can you do in your garden, in your fields? And then also some testimonials and results. So it will all be mixed in that presentation. Uh, but that's um, uh, the summary. And I show you my new logo at the right. I hope you like it. <laughs> uh, so we, we go further. So um, an atmospheric antenna, how it works. So we, we will first uh, uh, talk a little bit how uh, the electrical energies and magnetic energies work on Earth. So we have an electrical field between the high atmosphere and, uh, and the floor of the earth and the earth. 
uh, we have like between 100,000 and 300,000 volt. So, it's so we, we live in a very high voltage and uh, that influences all life on earth. Um, uh, and that corresponds with around one, 100 volt every meter high. Uh, so it, it corresponds with 100 volt. But when you go on a mountain or uh, above uh, a big building or a pyramid or a building, uh, you will have like 100 volt every uh, centimeter or every inch, for example. So the, 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 the intensity of the voltage will be a lot higher uh, above uh, structures. Uh, than than just on on uh, than just on a flat land. That's also uh, important to understand because the plants will grow differently uh, on a flat land than on on a mountain or on a building. Um, and then we have also the magnetic field of the Earth. We live in a in a magnetic field, so the Earth is a gigantic magnet. With, uh, with the magnetic field that we can measure everywhere on Earth and around the Earth. And, uh, uh, and also all life forms need that magnetic field to live and to evolve uh, in a good way. If, 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 if we lack of that magnetic field or that natural electrical field, then we become sick or less resistant or, or it, 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 it doesn't grow well. And uh, those antennas will work uh, depending on which antennas, but the, 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 the normal atmospheric antennas will work more with the electrical field. Huh? So what, what we see on the, on the left. The electrical field is also not just an electrical field. It's not just a static electrical field that don't move. No, uh, it, that electrical field of the earth will also be influenced by the sun activity. Uh, when there was sunspot activity, you see that, for example, uh, uh, in Norway, uh, Sweden, or north of Canada, maybe, when you see the uh, aurora borealis or uh, uh, that that's when the the ionosphere is ionized uh, more because of of the of the activity of the sun uh, that that will influence the electricity on earth and uh, and so uh, uh, it's um, it will create like kind of uh, frequencies it will create like uh, kind of information. When we talk about frequencies, we talk also about information. Um, so it's a, that's also important to understand that it's not just a static magnetic field or a static electrical field, but it, it's like the, the um, uh, uh, yes, it's like a receiver of, of all kind of more subtle energies or more subtle electrical fields and frequencies that will influence uh, all life forms too. So that, that's why I show uh, that image of, of a frequency uh, on the bottom. And the earth magnetic field also, it's very similar. It's, it's also not just a static magnetic field, it's also frequencies and influences that will be influenced also by the sun and, and the planets uh, all around. Um, yes, so um, uh, what else is <laughs> important to tell? Ah, yes, well, when you have uh, 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 storms and thunder strikes, then uh, uh, every time there is a thunder strike on Earth, this will create a, a like kind of radio waves a very frequency, also high frequency but but a lot of low frequency radio waves that we also call call today uh, the, the 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 schumann waves so everybody 
a lot of people talk about the Schumann waves, but don't really know uh, much about this. Uh, but that can be a, a, a presentation on itself. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a whole subject too. But the Schumann waves are very important too for plant growth and for, for healthy living beings, uh, for, for all organisms on Earth. It's like a kind of heartbeat of the Earth. Um, we have to know that every minute, every few seconds, you have uh, thunder strikes on Earth somewhere. There are a lot about uh, around the equator on Earth, almost every day. Uh, a lot. There are countries like uh, Rwanda, Burundi, where the the first uh, reason of that is is a thunder strike <laughs> in life. Uh, so it's uh, because because there are so much uh, thunder strikes. Uh, in our countries, there are not so much uh, thunder strikes. In, in um, uh, because of the place on Earth. But the radio waves generated by those thunder strikes goes all over the world, all around the world. So even if there is a thunder strike in, uh, in the middle of Africa, uh, it will generate uh, radio waves all around the Earth. And, it, and that radio wave, it's like a heartbeat of the Earth. And um, and when the intensity changes or the frequencies changes, uh, it will also change uh, all uh, living beings or influence uh, living beings. And so, yeah, we will continue. <laughs> oh, that's uh, an example in my garden with uh, rhubarb. Um, rhubarb is, is a plant that really responds very well to electroculture techniques. As soon as you put an antenna or whatever kind of antennas, you will see that they, they will grow a lot, a lot better. So my, my rhubarb in the past was tall, around one meter high. But after I put uh, uh, electroculture, it's like uh, all every year between one meter twenty and one meter forty five uh, high, uh, so it's it's very big, uh, uh, and I see that over and over uh, to to my customers or to the participants of different uh, uh, groups on social networks, they have very good results on uh, on rhubarb. So the, the and you see in the antenna in the middle that's one with uh, spirals and uh, different kind of spirals, uh, Igina spirals and uh, Fibonacci spirals. So you can combine also. Uh, there is also a Lakovsky coil that you maybe you can see around my uh, face. Uh, uh, I I try to combine different techniques too in that in those atmospheric antennas. Uh, uh, that's also interesting is that you can, in most cases, you can combine different techniques of electroculture in, uh, in one. Huh? You, you can use a very simple atmospheric antennas, but you can also put um, uh, spirals with it and, and, and uh, magnets if you want also in different ways. So uh, uh, you can really combine also different techniques, but each technique has its own uh, energies. Huh? So uh, uh, the, the Lakovsky coil, the, the Igina spirals, the, uh, we will see in, in another presentation uh, uh, later, but uh, it's good to know that you can combine. Um, so here you see, uh, a drawing uh, to explain um, this, the, the cycle of uh, the electricity in our environment. Uh, it, it's not complete, but it gives an idea uh, uh, how it works and how an antenna like this works. And you see uh, on top of the antenna that you see E uh, minus its uh, electrons. It, it's, it symbolizes electrons. So that, that's what we call that's what we call the point effect. It's that that's a, a scientific uh, description. Um, is that on the points you will have the on on points on 
atoms or metals, you will have the electrons that will tend to um, to to fly away or to to uh, to be uh, or, or or to be or to be ejected, and it will create a kind of ionization around. And the, those electrons will go uh, uh, to to the positive pool that is the sky or the high atmosphere. So they will go uh, up mostly and, um, and around, uh, but mostly up. And an antenna like this will bring the zero voltage of the earth, of the plane of the earth on the top of the antenna. Uh, and like we, like I, I told, I, 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 I told you before, every one meter high, you have a uh, hundred fold. Uh, maybe I can show you another picture where you see that. Uh, yes, here, here on the left, uh, uh, you see complete left that every one meter you have hundred fold, for example, and the antenna will bring the, the zero volt of the earth on top of the antenna because you put a wire that is connected to the earth to on top of the antenna and then the the lines of voltage will 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 be a lot closer together uh, above the antenna very close to the antenna you you see the same uh, effect on uh, above a tree or above a building or above a pyramid or above a, a mountain you see the same effect. The, the intensity of the electrical field will be a lot higher above. And then it creates, like I, I tell, um, that's kind of uh, uh, the, 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 yeah, like I tell, the, the kind of electrical um, umbrella effect. It's that it will create a lower voltage around the antenna. And when you have a lower voltage around the antenna, that's very good for the plants. Uh, uh, it will help or it will create an environment that is not good for disease and for, uh, and for pests and insects. You have also a lot of good insects too, but uh, I, I, I'm telling about like, uh, uh, all kind of insects that eat your plants that that you don't want <laughs> and um, because uh, uh, most of those uh, insects and and most of of disease uh, organisms uh, like to thrive or to live in an uh, in an environment that is very uh, ox ox oxidized or very oxidative and that's mostly with a higher voltage, a higher voltage. And, um, and so uh, an antenna like this will also protect around because it will create a lower voltage. Uh, it will create an environment with more, um, it will create an environment with more electrons. And so it will be more electron negative. So we, we go again on that uh, image. And like, we, like I told, at the top of the antenna, the electrons will try to fly away because they, are, they, are, they, they can move. Um, and, uh, and then it will create a lack of electrons on top. And then it will like asp aspire, like, uh, like uh, yes, it will aspire new electrons from the earth to the top and then you have another phenomenon that happens is electro osmosis is that uh, the water molecule will follow the electrons so the water molecule follows the electron flow and that's why in a tree because a tree has also all those effects uh, you have the up flow that goes uh, up to the tree very high. And that's not only because of capillarity, it's also because of electro osmosis. 
is that you have a, an electrical flow, an electron flow from the earth to the sky, and that uh, creates then the, the water to be attracted by the tree and also uh, the water to go up in the tree until the, uh, to the top. If now you, you connect um, a wire in the tree or you put the antenna in the tree, then the electrons will, will flow through the antenna. They will not flow through the tree because they will try to find the most, the most easy part to go. Uh, to to the sky and then they will uh, flow through the through the wire in place of flowing through the tree and the the the, the electrosmosis process cannot happen because then the the up flow on on the tree will be stopped or will be uh, uh, or, or will be or, or, or will be reduced huh? So that is why it's not good to put a wire in the tree, <laughs> uh, 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 because then you will reduce the, the that electrosmosis process, and that's very uh, scientific uh, effect uh, that you can find in in uh, in books or yes, you just have to look uh, for electroosmosis and you and and they explain. Uh. Um, so you have the electrons that goes through the trees, through the antennas from the earth to the sky. Then it's collected in the clouds, for example. And then the clouds uh, need uh, to make rain. That's also interesting to know. To make rain, you need like a, a, a balance between a positive charges and negative charges. If you have too much positive charges, then the raindrops doesn't uh, doesn't um, um, uh, the, the, the 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 clouds stay just a cloud, but it doesn't make raindrops, and, and that's what you see a lot now with the pollution, um, and also with the electromagnetic uh, pollution too, that creates also a lot of. Uh, positive charges is that you have uh, rain clouds, but you have no rain. <laughs> uh, so uh, it, 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 it's, it's like it stops the process. And, um, and that's also why we need a lot of trees and forests to make rain. It's not only uh, a chemical effect, it's also an electrical effect that influences. And, um, and that's also why uh, I tell, oh, I, I will explain um, how uh, those antennas uh, protect against hail, uh, hail formation in clouds. Because those antennas are like also antennas that will collect um, atmospheric electricity and earth electricity, and they are like a communication device between the electricity of the atmosphere and the electricity of the earth. And hail, for example, that is uh, created, the charges are built up in the cloud, but too much when uh, they build up, but they cannot discharge regularly to the earth and then they build up, they build up and then it creates uh, in place of creating little raindrops, it creates directly hail and then is discharged very uh, hardly and then uh, the, the, the bigger or is the build up of the, of the electricity and the, the bigger will be the hail uh, the, and, and the bigger will be the damage. Also, the, the more you have pollution, uh, the more it will uh, charge up the clouds with that electrical charge, uh, the, the bad electrical charge. And then uh, uh, the more you will also have uh, uh, destruction and so on. Huh? So uh, we, we, we almost never hear in the news that a forest is at, is uh, destroyed by hail, but you hear uh, cars destroyed or or uh, roofs or things like that. But a forest 
it's almost never it's in the fields around but not in the forest because the forest uh, or like a lot of atmospheric antennas together and they will discharge the the clouds and then there is almost no hill or the the hill will be a lot more little than in the flatland around or and if the flatland is covered with plastic and a lot of techniques and 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 technology that create positive charges, then you have even more uh, uh, harm and 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 destruction. But like the people don't know, don't understand, or or just don't know, then they cannot protect themselves, and then they they mostly do the opposite of what is good, uh, <laughs> uh, and and you have uh, more problems. So that's about hill. Now again to to the electrical cycle. You see that the cycle of electricity and the water is very um, uh, similar. It's very similar. Huh? So the the electron flow will flow from the earth to the sky through the through the trees for example and then uh, with the clouds it will rain back uh, to the earth and so uh, uh, the electrons they flow also from uh, uh, the the uh, from the earth to the sky and then the earth will be depleted of electrons over time and then sometimes you have then a storm and thunder strikes it's like it recharges the earth <laughs> it's like a recharge of the earth and uh, the, it's like a cycle like this but in reality uh, it's not only thunder strikes uh, that's the visible phenomenon but sometimes it's invisible when the charges are not so big uh, but it happens too. Huh? Uh, uh, it, it's uh, you. You have sometimes the the electrons flowing from the earth to the sky, and sometimes at certain moments it's the opposite way. Huh? It's difficult to understand why, but it happens like this. And um, and then when you have thunder, you have also those Schumann waves. Huh? That's why I put there uh, 7.83 hertz. It's, uh, it's the basic frequency of the Schumann wave, uh, for example. But that will be in the, in the next presentation. We will talk a lot more about the Schumann waves. Um, now, all living organisms like a lot those this cycle. Huh? If we if we if we cut this this cycle down, yes, then you have problems with uh, with the growth of the trees, with the microorganism in the earth uh, that need also that flow of electricity and that flow of of magnetic electromagnetic energies. Um, so uh, it's it's all uh, all connected. <laughs> so we go further. Ah, yes. Uh, yeah, before I go further, I'll tell also something more. Um, when you put antennas, you will the uh, charge and discharge more regularly the electricity from the atmosphere and the earth, and that creates like a climate that is more re re that is more regular and more smooth. So you will have less less big discharges. So when there is a storm maybe at your neighbor it will have a lot of it will be uh, very hard and and at your place a lot smoother a lot uh, a lot less hard because the energies flow a lot more a lot better it's like in a, in alternative medicine with acupuncture if the energies flows through the meridians everything goes smooth if the energies uh, are blocked then you have uh, then you be then you begin to have problems huh? <laughs> and so those antennas you can see them also in a kind of chinese point of view of acupuncture needles and but uh, big acupuncture needles <laughs> that that will stimulate that flow of energy huh? you can see that like this too huh? so here you see 
on the bottom on the right an image where you you see uh, a tree a building a house for example and and the antenna and you see how the the electrical fields will behave around and that's also why when you put a, an antenna if you put it too close to a tree it will don't it will not have much effect if the antenna is too little and also if you put it too close to a, a building uh, too because it's what is the highest that will, will take the energy in a certain way uh, so that, then you have to take uh, some distance from it and then you will um, you you then you can collect more energy in a certain way yeah. mm. Uh, yes, here you see again. <clears throat> uh, it's, it's to show where to put the antenna. If you put it too close to the tree, uh, you are uh, under his umbrella effect in a certain way, and then the antenna itself will not have much effect. So it's better to uh, to take some uh, distance. And how much distance? I would say if the um, half of the height of the of the tree is is uh, is enough uh, if you if the tree is like uh, 10 meter high if you go at five meter of the tree you can put your antenna of, of two or three or four meters and you will have it will work normally i think uh, it's difficult really to know we would need some measurement devices to to be sure but it's it's uh, it's an uh, it gives you an idea if you put at the same height high of the tree then it's no problem then you can be very close to the tree yeah? but if you put it uh, less high then it's better to take distance yeah? so we, you you see also the effect of a tree uh, in in springtime, when the tree doesn't have the leaves, it still works as an antenna, and you will see that the plants around will grow more quicker. Will grow more quicker in the beginning of the spring, but as soon as the tree has its leaves, uh, then it will create a shadow and things like that, and will take also more of otter and things like that and then the plants will grow little less because the tree will take the energy uh, and the tree will 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 also take the the light huh? so and light is also electromagnetic waves huh? so but that's uh, very interesting to observe in nature that uh, close to the tree you will see even before it has leaves the the it acts as an antenna and the plants grow uh, a lot more quicker and then after a while is the opposite huh? hmm. also the birds uh, that that's uh, that's um, explained in the book of of matteo tavera uh, sacred mission uh, that you can find on internet or maybe on my internet site or also Angela I think sh shared the book and um, uh, and here I explained with an image the 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 birds will will also um, uh, fly at certain high because of the of the voltage of the in the air uh, so before a storm, before uh, stormy days, uh, they fly um, uh, quite high, for example, also insects. And often, and when it's storm, then the electrical field is a lot higher. And then you have, for example, every half a meter, 100 volt in place of every meter. And then the, the birds will, um, will fly uh, lower. It's not that they have an altimeter, they cannot measure the altitude, but they measure the voltage, <laughs> uh, uh, probably, and insects too, because it creates a kind of energy. When the, the bird flies, uh, you have uh, their, uh, their feathers, their, their feathers that will, that, that will, um, that will, how to say that, um, uh, that will um, um rub. <clears throat> rub what rub 
yes, uh, yes uh, the, the, there will be an interaction with the air and it will lose electrons and so uh, uh, probably the, the 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 insect or the bird will feel that though that it loses a lot more electrons higher up than than below and uh, and then uh, um, it, 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 it will then adapt uh, its high of the fly, probably. Uh, we, we don't really know, but it feels that. Huh? And after the storm, the voltage is again more normal, and then the birds and the insects fly again higher. Mm -hmm. So that's an, an, and then also, like the bird will lose electrons, but it's not connected with the earth. Well, why, while it's flying, and then it will lose electrons because uh, the, the the feathers will lose some electrons with the air, and then uh, when the bird will go on a, on a tree, it will again reabsorb electrons. So it will uh, create a flow of electricity in the tree uh, between the earth and the sky. And this helps also the tree to grow. For example, the 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 just the effect. Uh, it's my it's my hypothesis, uh, but uh, uh, I believe that uh, the the uh, when the insects and the birds uh, go on the trees, fly and go again on the trees and on the branches, it creates like uh, electrical impulses that will uh, stimulate uh, plant growth. I'm I'm completely convinced of that. And it would be quite uh, quite easy to measure that. It, it would be interesting to do kind of scientific experiment where we where we uh, do that, where we like uh, touches the tree uh, every uh, every every few seconds uh, just to discharge uh, some some uh, electricity like a bird. And uh, I'm sure they they will grow better, <laughs> uh, probably. So that's also interesting. You will see that when you put antennas in your garden, the the birds like it very much, and they like to go also on the antennas. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, they like it. So here on the timeline, uh, history timeline, um, those antennas, we find a lot of books around end of uh, 1800. Uh, there are several books around 1890, uh, 1900, 1920. Uh, and, but in reality, I found already uh, books, articles, where they speak already about uh, lightning rods on the Temple of Jerusalem, for example, uh, like this, described in the Bible. Uh, so it's like 2000 years uh, ago. And in the years uh, 600, uh, uh, they, they're also uh, telling that um, the, the farmers put uh, like uh, big uh, uh, rods like this in, in uh, or poles in their fields. Uh, also, uh, they think or they interpret also against the lightning or also to improve plant growth. And then there was a Pope of around 600 that decided to, um, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to say no to this uh, habit or use because he said it was pagan and uh, uh, they, they don't have to do that. And then a few hundred years later, Around the year 1000, there, there was a French pope. Well, it was a good one, I think. <laughs> but uh, there was a French pope. It was the first French pope in history. And uh, he said uh, that they can do it again. They can use that uh, habit or that use in, uh, in the farms uh, if, they, if they accompany that use with uh, Catholic uh, prayers. <laughs> So uh, it's, it's funny to, to, um, to see how it happens. And, uh, and so we, we, we can find that back in very old articles. And then uh, we don't hear about this anymore during a uh, few centuries, uh, several centuries. And then we found back again uh, in books 
uh, one famous book is the book of L'Abbé Bertolon in 1783 or 84. It was uh, uh, still in the times of the king in France uh, before he died and before he was killed. And um, and uh, he he wrote a, a whole book about the electricity of plants in that time and those kind of antennas uh, to improve plant growth. So it's very interesting. And then 100 years later, uh, there were there were a lot of scientific research around 1890, 94. You have uh, an, uh, an agricultural uh, high school in uh, France that did a lot of uh, research uh, with, with that kind of antennas, with very good results. You have the book of L'Abbé Poulain uh, about this and, uh, and also some other books. And I hope for the moment those books are in French, but I hope uh, to be able to translate them and to publish them uh, in, in the coming uh, uh, as soon as I can. Uh, but uh, oh, everything takes time. But it's in the project to help to publish that. But you can find the books in French already uh, on paper format that are uh, published again uh, with some editors. And uh, if we find uh, the PDF, then we can easily translate it in, uh, in all languages we, we want. But it's interesting as in, in a historical perspective. And then in the years 20s, then you have Justin Christophe Lowe, that is a French uh, researcher, and uh, not a pioneer, entrep entrepreneur. And, uh, and he developed really a lot uh, electroculture for the farmers, uh, even all over the world. And that book you can find back easily, uh, the book of Justin Christophe Lowe. And he uh, improved a lot uh, the different techniques with, uh, with uh, the atmospheric antennas. Uh, so we, we will uh, talk about this. And then later, now today, uh, since around, um, 20 years, you have in France a guy named Philippe Forer that did uh, again antennas like this in his garden with huge success. And then a few years later, I came <laughs> uh, to, to also develop this more to the farmers and like Justin Christophe Lowe to become a kind of entrepreneur to, to develop all that uh, in, the, in, in agriculture. Uh, and so we will see what we can do with the modern way of doing, with the modern techniques. Because like you see in the years in the 20s, like you see on the image, they used uh, telephone poles, like very heavy uh, wooden poles that were very high, like uh, six, seven meter high. But it was a wall installation, uh, heavy weight, uh, uh, so uh, uh, it was difficult to do uh, if you want to do it in a wall field uh, with all kind of poles like this. It's it's a lot of work and a lot of investment. But today now we can make easily very high poles with uh, telescopic uh, rods like this. So with, with the modern technology, it becomes a lot more easy to do. Like uh, you can use a fishing uh, line or fishing um, rod, uh, a, a, a telescopic fishing rod in carbon or in fiberglass, and you can easily make an antenna of like uh, six meter high, even 10 meters high if you want. Uh, uh, so in, in, the, in the old times, it didn't exist uh, that technology, but today we can. So uh, it, it, it makes this technology or this technique again, very interesting now. Eh? But you can also use iron uh, rebars like uh, you use in the building uh, of houses. Uh, you can use a, a, a rebar a uh, that is used to put in the concrete. Uh, so we go further. I have to go more quick because <laughs> I talk too much. <laughs> um, so the simplest installation is just a rod in the, uh, uh, just uh, put in the earth with uh, uh, some points made of, of wires, uh, pieces of wires. 
uh, of any length if you want. You can put them together like uh, in the middle picture, you see a bamboo, like a bamboo stick with a wire go from the top to the earth and, uh, and just connect it with a bunch of wires. Uh, that's the most simple way of doing it. Eh? Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's no money to do that. Eh? Just a little bit of, of time, eh? like uh, five or 10 minutes and you make your, <laughs> your tunnel very quickly uh, like this so this already can can give a lot of results around the antenna and then you can improve a little bit by also putting wires in your soil and then it will also improve the area it will increase the radius of influence around uh, uh, that's kind of antenna like uh, justin christophe Lowe did he put he 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 made uh, antennas with also uh, so with a bunch of wires um, directed to the sky like you see, but also um, like a piece of metal of iron that uh, went uh, that was horizontal like you see and that is oriented to the south. And the wire that goes to the earth is connected on the north side of the antenna. And that's because he wanted to collect the energy, the, the magnetic energy of that horizontal piece of iron that is put uh, to the south and that is put really oriented north-south or south-north. Uh, so he, he combined in that way two different techniques he combined the the magnetic antenna like i i uh, uh, like i showed in the first presentation if you remember um uh, so he combined the magnetic antenna with the atmospheric antenna before christoph Lo, in the 1800s and 1700s they never used or they never talk about that magnetic uh, antenna effect huh? They, they speak only about that atmospheric uh, antenna effect with a bunch of wires directed to the to the sky. It's uh, it seems in history that it's Christoph Lowe that discovered that magnetic antenna effect. Huh? So uh, of of what we know today, maybe it's not him. Maybe he was also inspired from somebody else or, so, or some other experiences before. But of what we know today uh, in our research, it's it's uh, it's appeared the first time with his uh, with his books and his research. So it's, it was very interesting. And that is why he put a wire oriented north south. He put the antenna on the south side then and the wire to, to the north. That's just to benefit from that magnetic effect huh? uh, that he put it to the north. If you want just to benefit of the atmospheric electrical field effect, then you can put the wire in any direction. Uh, it, you, you will spread the energy, but you will spread it not so far away. Maybe the 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 wire can be as long as the high of the antenna maybe a little bit longer but then the energy will stop at a certain moment that if you put it really to the north uh, south north then the energy never stops it it will it will you can spread the energy over hundreds of meters even kilometers huh? um, so that's interesting to understand <clears throat> that's from all books here that's a book from germany for example from 1927 where they they speak about or they try to to uh, imagine how would be uh, science and technology in the years 2000 uh, so uh, uh, from 1927 it's nice to to see that we, we would have liked that it was like this, but it's not really like this. Uh, but you see on the right, 
like uh, an, an, a power plant that collects the electricity with kind of balloons in the air with a lot of points on it. It's like uh, it's like uh, the virus they try to to explain us <laughs> the, the viruses <laughs> balloons, but but here it's balloons with uh, with all points very high in the sky because the higher you put them the more electricity you can collect huh? uh, so that's why and the more surface when you have a ball you can collect a lot more electricity than just with a wire with a bunch of wires huh? so and here they 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 combine two techniques uh, like the wires and the balls huh? like you see also on churches on temples you see also mostly uh, those two kind of, of uh, ways of collecting energy. Um, so that's interesting. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, here you see on the, on the image below, on the, on the, on the left, uh, like Justin Christophe loaded, um, uh, with antennas like this in the field on the south side with the wires going to the north. And then he put um, every one meter 50 or every two meters uh, in parallel with each other, a wire and an antenna. Uh, later on, um, in the 30s, 1930s, then he didn't put any more so much antennas in the field. He put then only one and connected uh, to all the wires. Uh, he put as much wires, but uh, only connected to one antenna uh, because he discovered that you don't need really to put so much antennas. So it's uh, much cheaper. Eh? Uh, but then you have to connect the wires in a certain way. Uh, we will see that to uh, to make it uh, working uh, well. Um, you see on the picture on the right, on the bottom, that's the field with the same plants, but uh, with the antennas, you see a lot more uh, plants and vegetation. And on the top, on the right, you see a lot less plants, but you see the antennas further away in the depth of the of the picture uh, is the field connected with uh, with the antennas, and in front it's the field without. And so you see a lot. The plants are a lot more little, huh? uh, a, a big difference. So this was on 12th July, 1926. Huh? Uh, it's uh, it's written. And um, on the on the left, on top, you see an analysis of of the minerals uh, of the plants uh, that were yielded. Uh, on the on the left is the column uh, with electroculture, and on the right without. You see, for example, on the second line, you see calcium, calcus, calcium. You see 2.6 with electroculture and only 1.6 without. So that's the calcium in the plants. Huh? So you see that the plants were bigger, like you see on the pictures, but also the nutrient content was a lot more, uh, a lot higher, and not just a little bit higher. It's it's almost uh, it's sometimes the double. Huh? Like for example, uh, potassium. The third line, it's 1.12, and uh, without electroculture, only 0 0.43. Um, stickstoff, so stickstoff is uh, a nitrogen in, in English, N nitrogen. So is the is the fourth line. You see 0 0.35 with electroculture, and only 0 0.17 without. So nitrogen, it's a, it's an atom that is in all proteins and uh, and uh, amino acids. So it, it gives an idea of the protein content of the plant. Huh? So when you have more nitrogen, so it's very interesting. It's like a double protein content in the in those plants. Um, that's 
very interesting to to see that the plants uh, with electroculture or with that kind of technique it's one of the most easy techniques and the most effective techniques too uh, you can really increase a lot uh, the the yields but also the the but also the quality of the yields and the, the nutrient content it's like you need when when we would say um, you you to be healthy you eat an apple a day to keep you healthy but today with like there are almost no vitamins in the apples of today you would need to eat uh, 50 apples of the of of, of 100 years ago uh, every day to to keep uh, uh, healthy so uh, you see that it's not possible to eat 50 apples a day <laughs> well with electroculture you can eat half an apple <laughs> so you can eat half an apple a day because it's more it's 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 more nutrients and also uh so you will have more nutrients more sugar content more vitamins so you will have less diseases because diseases and and insect pests almost attacks uh, the weak plants, the plants that doesn't have uh, all those nutrients and, and protection uh, agents, uh, protection uh, molecules in the plant. Also, what is interesting to, uh, to, uh, to, to observe is that you will increase the yields, like maybe double, but you will need to eat half, uh, half the quantity you normally use uh, to to feed yourself because there are more nutrients. So it's like you increase by four times the yield because you you if you double and you need half, only half uh, of it, uh, it's like uh, you you increase by four times the the production in a certain way. Yeah. So that's very interesting to observe. Here you see from the same book. So it's a book where they uh, copied the work of uh, and Germany. And that time you have to imagine in the years between the two world wars, uh, there was a competition between France and Germany and uh, Germany uh, tried to bury the patent of Justin Christophe Lowe, but he didn't want, and then he, they copied him. Uh, that's what comes out from uh, old articles from that time. Uh. But um, but uh, uh, well, whatever, it's not so important. But what is interesting is that they did really interesting experiments that we can share today. Yeah. So here you see on the right, uh, corn, flax, and um, uh, flax in in uh, in English maybe is the same name, maybe different. It's a line or to make loads. Huh? Uh, and then uh, beetroot on the on the white. Right. You see uh, the three plants a lot more little on the control plot, and on the right, on the left, you see the three same plants uh, with electroculture. So you see it's a huge difference. Now, if you if you would have put um, artificial uh, fertilizers, maybe the plants will be also bigger but they will have less nutrient content and they will be a lot more uh, 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 sensitive to disease and with electroculture not huh? um, so <laughs> here you see different ways or or uh, examples on how you can connect all those bunch of wires together um, um, i make nice Antennas that I improved over the years, uh, like you find on my internet site, uh, you see that antenna on the left. It's my latest uh, version uh, from my 10 years that I developed this. Um, it's nice and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you can do how, how you like. Huh? Uh, so I combined the two uh, methods. So the horizontal uh, magnetic effect that you see, uh, I put like a, a steel rod, uh, horizontal with a little magnet to increase that magnetic uh, antenna effect. Huh? And on the back, on the north, I connect uh, with the wire. 
And um, yes, I combined also with spirals like you see, uh, double spirals like this. Uh, on the images you see, you can use a tube, for example, and put the wires inside and then clamp them together. Uh, you can use also uh, uh, other things. Uh, uh, you can also just take a wire and 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 and, and wrap the wires all together in a bunch uh, around the rod, and it will work too. The the most important is to connect electrically the atmosphere with the earth. It's really uh, the higher you will put the antenna. And in my eyes or in my viewpoint, uh, uh, how I explain it, so you will hear a lot of people telling about electroculture. They have all their hypothesis, <laughs> their ideas. But with my experience, my viewpoint, it's quite simple. Uh, the higher you will put it, the more you will have effect. And then you can improve the effect also by putting more wires, huh? like to make a, a bunch of wires, or to put uh, that horizontal magnetic effect with it, or also to put spirals with it, and different things like this. You can also work on the length of the wires if you want, because probably it's like a radio antenna too. Huh? Uh, uh, so uh, if you put different lengths, you will uh, collect different frequencies. And that's uh, that would be an interesting uh, approach of research. It's to see if we have antennas with different lengths, if, if they work better or not uh, compared with antennas with wires of the same length. But in, in theory, probably it will work better, but it, it need, uh, would be interesting to to examine or to experience that. Huh? Ah, yes, this is from um, images that you can find also in the book of Justin Christophe Lowe, how to connect the wires together. <clears throat> uh, so um, I told already, on the antenna on the right, you can you can just a, a, a wrap a wire around like this. Um, but if you connect in the earth with the wires that are oriented north south, then you have a way to connect them. Like you see the image on the left, you 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 have to wrap them in a certain uh, um, uh, like this. Uh, um, why? Because when if you would do a U-turn, then you will cut the energy of the magnetic effect. That it's it's it, it just because of that. For the electrical effect, the how you connect it, it's not so important. But it's for the magnetic effect. You 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 have to see that like a flow of energy, and it, it doesn't have to make a U-turn like you see on the in the middle of the image on top. Um, uh, uh, he put uh, a, a second wire that connects the two wires together, and that's to uh, to be sure that that flow of energy goes through, uh, because otherwise, with those two uh, uh, circles, it, maybe it will not be enough connection to 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 flow that magnetic energy. Yeah. So we continue. Um, I here you see the the, the that new ID since uh, one or two years uh, to use telescopic uh, rods or, or poles, um, and then you can really uh, make a very high antennas very easily that are very strong. Then you have to make your antenna very lightweight, uh, otherwise it will move too much uh, when there is a storm. Uh, but uh, And also when there is snow, in Canada you can have a lot of snow, so uh, uh, then in the winter time it can be good to put them in, in uh, a way, because if the snow goes on the antenna, it makes heavy weight, and then with the wind it, uh, it moves too much. Huh? So, but if there is no snow on the antenna, it's okay. Um, so, um, 
like you see, uh, uh, as you see in my garden, that's a, a picture from my garden. Uh, you see that there are wires of, of electricity or uh, it's not electricity, it's the telephone wires in the sky go over my garden. Well, you don't have to put the antenna below those wires, otherwise it will not work. Uh, you have to put it um, a little bit beside or at the same height uh, if it's uh, close because otherwise you have the same problem of that umbrella effect but with the wires uh, so it's the wires that will collect the energy so it's good to put the antenna a little bit uh, further away from it a few meters already it's okay if it's not high uh, but never put an antenna like this below high voltage uh, uh, electrical lines uh, because there it's not uh, authorized uh, to because it's very dangerous otherwise the the high voltage uh, if there's a lot of electricity in the air it can like a a jump on the antenna and then it can be dangerous uh. so never put it too close to high voltage lines um uh yes just to know important to know huh? so uh yes that's uh to put if you make your telescopic antenna you can use uh like a screw like this that uh, that is used to uh, screw in the earth and uh, now it's quite new uh, since a few years you can find this in markets um uh, it's used also to put a parasol or an umbrella in the garden, <laughs> but you can use it to put your antenna and then uh, the antenna will be a lot stronger because if you just put the pole in the earth and the earth is, is uh, humid, very humid, then and there is wind, then the pole will not be really fixed and it can fall down very easy. But if you put uh, like a screw like this, then uh, the antenna will really be uh, well fixed uh, in the earth and will not move uh, much. Uh, it, it works very well. And that's also a way to, um, to make it easy for farmers. If you want to uh, put antennas in one hectare and you want e in an easy way, put them and also be able to put them away with screws it's very easy you just have to screw in the earth it takes five minutes you put your antenna and at the end when you want to yield your 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 crops you put them again away you take them out of the field and then you can go with your machines in the in the field uh, more easily because you don't have those uh, antennas in the fields um, and so it's a, it's a very easy way to, to use those antennas. And like you see on the picture on the right, on the bottom, you can use the iron uh, rebar. Uh, if you make uh, just a little hole inside, uh, then uh, you can also use the rebar. And then I would advise maximum four meter high with the rebar, uh, with the iron uh, rebar, because uh, the rebar is a very heavy weight, and so you cannot go as high as with uh, uh, at, as with a telescopic uh, pole. Uh, uh, that's why, uh, but it works very well. It's more cheap. A rebar costs only maybe between five and ten dollars in the shop. In euros, it's around five to ten euros. So, if you take a telescopic pole, it will cost like. Uh, 30, 50, 100 or, uh, euros uh, or dollars. Uh, um, uh, it's also not much money, yeah, but, uh, and if you uh, find uh, in the flea market some uh, old telescopic poles or fishing lines, then it's almost nothing. Yeah. So uh, it's, 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 it's no money for, for the benefit you can have today. They sell apples, one euro an apple or one euro a tomato. Uh, so here you have to invest uh, maybe a few tons of euro, but you will harvest a lot more. <laughs> you will harvest a lot more. So here, for example, what you can harvest. Huh? 
Here you have sunflowers with heads that are like close to the world records of uh, here 76 centimeters uh, diameter. Uh, that's one of my uh, contacts uh, in the electroculture group. And uh, here also strawberries that were like 42 grams each. Uh, so it was uh, really wonderful at that place. Huh? Now we will have all different results, huh? but you will, but uh, in most cases, it will always uh, be more than before. So it's interesting. Yeah? So here, another example. Uh, how you can use those antennas. That's examples you find in the book of Justin Christophe Lotu. Um, so he connect, for example, with the wires uh, that are used to hold the trees or the apple trees uh, or the grape uh, vines. Um, it's good to connect them to the earth too or close to the um, uh, because it will have more effect, like you see, there's a wire connected close to the plant between the wire and the earth. Huh? So there is a wire that connects it because then it will work even uh, uh, more huh? and better. But it's not, uh, if you don't put that wire, you will also have effects. Huh? Uh, but if you can put that wire, it will even increase the effect. Um, so you see some examples. Huh? Um, yeah, other examples uh, to come uh, to show the comparison with uh, antenna from Justin Christophe Lou. Uh, I make the antennas a lot more cheaper because if you would need to do exactly like Justin Christophe Lou did, it will it would cost hundreds of euros to make that uh, today because uh, it's uh, the way it is made. But to have the same results, you don't need to, to make it like he did. He, he did it like this because of his time uh, in, in, in the context of his time, it, it was like this. But today with our knowledge and, and the materials, uh, you can make it more easy and have as good results. I have some uh, customers and, and, and contacts that had like 30 grapes on each plant in their fields uh, with an antenna and uh, that they made just a homemade uh, very simple antenna just a bunch of wires in the in the sky it was well it was uh, seven meters high if i remember and uh, in the book of Justin Christophe Lowe, it's written he had like 35 grapes on each plant uh, so it was very close, so it's quite the same uh, results. Also, for example, in the book of Christophe Lowe, he writes about uh, parsley that is around one meter high, so it's uh, very high and uh, big. And um, I had also some customers that had parsley of one meter high like this with such kind of antenna. So, you, you don't need to do it exactly like crystal flow. Uh, you, you will have also good effects if you do it more simple way. Uh, before crystal flow in the years 1800, they, they also uh, show, uh, had testimonials of, of uh, very good results and their antennas were just, uh, for example, the antenna of uh, the brother Paulin um, in 1894, in the high school of agriculture in Beauvais in France, uh, uh, his antenna was just a, a bunch of copper wires in the sky, uh, very high in the sky. Uh, so it was like the highest he did was 12 meter 50 high. Uh, and that's also interesting uh, because uh, Justin Christophe Lowe, he did antennas of 6 meters 25. So it's exactly the, the half of the height of the antenna of the brother Paulin uh, uh, 20 years before or 30 years before uh, Christophe Lowe. And Christophe Lowe, he was inspired, uh, of course, of the work of before him. Eh? It's normal. So it's interesting. Now, uh, brother Paulin tells in his book that 
yes, the higher you make the antenna, the broader uh, will be the influence, uh, the bigger will be the influence around. And he had even an effect. One time he measured effect on a whole hectare land or two acres and a half with an antenna of 12 meters 50 high on in the field. Uh, so it's very interesting. But in most cases, you will not have so uh, big area effect with one antenna. You, you will need to put a different as uh, several antennas in one hectare. Uh, I would put like around 10 to 20 antennas of, uh, of four to six meters high in, in one hectare. Then you are sure you, you will have uh, the energy all over the place. So here are other uh, images, um, how you can do. Uh, ah, here we were talking about uh, Father Paulin, or uh, I tell brother or Abbe, or here it's uh, Abbot or it's a father. Uh, in those times, it were always religious people uh, uh, that that did the science. Uh, uh, it's it's only after. Uh, the French Revolution that it changes <laughs> that they uh, that they um, uh, in the beginning of the French Revolution they killed a lot of uh, priests and so on and then they wanted to make schools but they discovered that they didn't had uh, teachers <laughs> uh, and then they authorized again religion because otherwise they would not have teachers <laughs> so <laughs> but that's a history of France. Huh? But here again, it's interesting that religion is not against science because all that kind of science was from uh, religious people. Eh? Uh, in the past, religion and society was very close together. And uh, why I I I mix I I I talk about this also is because it's important to understand uh, the origin of electricity. In the past. In religion, they um, in the in the Catholic religion uh, of our Western world, um, uh, there were and probably it's similar in the other religions of the world uh, because you see also uh, kind of uh, antennas and things on temples of all over the world from other religions too. Uh, I don't want to monopolize on Catholic religion, uh, but. Uh, it, it's what uh, we know here. And um, um, when I, I, I looked a lot in old books uh, in this autumn, this past autumn, uh, to, to uh, discover what was their search of electricity, or, or, or with what goal, or what was their objective to understand about electricity. And in the beginning, they were more searching to collect uh, life energy. They, they were more, more searching to collect from the sky a kind of electrical fluid or a kind of electrical phenomenon. In that time, they didn't know about voltage, amperage, and all those things. They didn't know about this in the 1700s. That's only later on that they discover, they, they, they become more precise in their description of electricity. And in the beginning, they discovered just that, uh, like we would see with, with thunderstrikes, storms, rainwater, uh, so electrical uh, influences, the plants grow better. So they were thinking, ah, we have a kind of living energy in that, in that electricity. There, there's something that influences life. So they, and then they wanted, and then they connected, for example, electricity they collected in uh, in jars in in bottles uh, uh what we call the laden jar and things like this uh, in bottles and then they connect uh, with electrodes to 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 uh, to a frog or muscle and then they see that the muscle contracts or that the frogs it's like he 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 he, he lives again and then they were really thinking they they are touching or they discovering from where is coming life energy and 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 their goal was really to 
to understand what is animating life or what uh, influences life. And then they developed a lot of te techniques to heal, uh, like we can find an alternative medicine. Already two, 300 years ago, they developed a lot of electrical techniques to improve health because it was like bringing again life energy to, to, the, to the body. And it's only uh, in the 1700s that it changes uh, the viewpoint of electricity and that it became, uh, they, they, they begin to use electricity to uh, make some machines running or, or, or things running. And then you had uh, Benjamin Franklin that came, it's kind of symbol that was completely against religion. And in religion, you want to find the sense of life. You want to understand what is life, what is life energy. And, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, that, that's uh, when you have a, a mass in the church. It's about uh, uh, you receive life energy from Jesus in a certain way. Huh? So it's, uh, it's really that symbol or that uh, habit or that use. Uh, but uh, then Franklin came and he was a Freemason. And they, they tell now in the books that Franklin discovered the lightning rod, but it, it, it already uh, existed uh, 2000 years before him <laughs> or 1500 years before him, but that they don't tell in our books, huh? in our schools. And, uh, but you can find that in, in the books. And, um, and then uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin had a theory about electricity that was very mechanistic, very materialistic. And then they changes completely the, the research and the viewpoint of electricity. And, uh, and then they were not uh, any more searching for life energy. They were just searching how to collect make produce more electricity to make machines running but they were not anymore looking officially about uh, the influence on life and since i would say since the years 20s 30s it was completely uh, flipped uh, flipped away uh, uh, censored uh, and uh, they 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 put all electroculture also away uh. So we continue. <laughs> That's just an uh, uh, explanation of the history a little bit that I discovered. So here you see uh, an antenna like you see from the Father Paulin uh, on those two images. That's a book. <clears throat> I went, um, I was searching for the, the origin of that book of Father Paulin. And then um, uh, one time I went to St. Petersburg, it was in 2018, because there was a lot of propaganda against Russia and so and so I, I was very curious and I wanted to see from inside. I took the plane, I went to St. Petersburg to see uh, uh, how is life in Russia. And, uh, and then I, I, I went to, to the library of the... Um, of the research institute of the v Vavilov Research Institute. The Vavilov Research Institute is an institute that exists since 1838 and that collects uh, uh, seeds from all over the world. Uh, it's like a seed bank of seeds of all over the world since 1838. And even during World War II, the, the people that worked in that institute, there were people that died from hunger uh, because they didn't want to eat the seeds that they collect to, to, to preserve them and they from hunger. Uh, so they really, uh, it, it's an institute that really uh, has, uh, it's very important for, uh, for the whole world. It's really a lot of, and they have also a library uh, with uh, with um, more than a million of books, with very old books too, uh, and also books in French, because all the books in Russia before 1914 were in French, in, in French. 
And so I went to that institute because I was thinking, I'm sure I will find some uh, some documents of electroculture there that uh, that has passed by or survived uh, all censor <laughs> and, and over time. And then I found that book of uh, uh, Father Paulin from that research from France. That's a book that you almost not find anymore in France. But since then, I found it also now in France, but it was not easy. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so uh, it's very interesting. And one day I will also uh, edit it. Uh, uh, but it's mostly about those antennas, like you see the picture. Uh, and you see on the picture on the left, uh, so an original uh, drawing of that antenna, and you see that it's noted uh, 12 meter 50 uh, uh, on below. And he said that the, the surface of influence was 250 square meters. Uh, so that's, uh, 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 that's interesting to know uh, that uh, an antenna of 12 meter 50 uh, in that book is written that the surface of influence was 250 square meters. In that book, I, I've read also that there was a Russian uh, agronomist. He put an antenna like this connected to, um, uh, to, uh, to a kind of bucket, a large bucket of uh, water with a kind of uh, um, uh, vinegar vinegar or or kind of uh, substance like this and then the water acts like a battery like a battery then the water is like a battery and can charge can build up a lot more electrical charge but he just did that experiment and um, uh, and then he wanted to to touch uh, the water and he had an electrical shock and he died because it was too much electricity. So that's very interesting uh, because uh, it, it shows like in the book of the German book I showed uh, that uh, you can really uh, collect atmospheric electricity and then uh, like uh, a charge up of batteries that you can use, uh, uh, for example, and transform in electricity that can be useful also. Uh. Um, so you have to be careful when you make very high antennas, uh, it can have some electricity. Um, or, or when you build up the charge in, uh, in fluids, uh, uh, sometimes you have to be careful. So uh the the what is good to do is always to connect the wire to earth the fluid so the water that you have also a wire that goes to the earth and then it, it will not build up too much charge and it will work too uh, because you can like this i guess you can like this energize the water if, if for example if you you want to energize the water to to give to your plants you can just connect to the wire of your antenna and it works very well so here an image to explain or to show again the the idea uh, the the theory that i i talked about that you have 100 to 300000 volt between the ionosphere and the surface of the earth so it's uh, between on 50 kilometers high, you have uh, so 300,000 volt. Hmm. Uh, here, an old image of uh, para hail, so antennas used uh, against hail uh, to protect the fields against hail. Um, um, I have a testimonial of a farmer uh, close to Lyon in France, where in, in, uh, in places where you have a lot of hail every year, you have a lot of damage uh, in the fields. And since he had put uh, antennas that were round towers, but you have also uh, similar effects with round towers, um, he, had, he didn't have any hail anymore. So he didn't have any damage anymore. Uh, so it's very interesting uh, to, to, to observe. So it's his observation. And it's already more than five years that he has uh, antennas in his fields. Yeah. 
So here you see a very old image from 1820 around, yes, 1820. And you see that from a, a, an old book. Um, and you see uh, like a village with uh, very high poles, like kind of antennas. And you see also in the back in the fields, all kind of high poles like this. So that's one. That's uh, one of the only images we can find or that I found uh, about that in the fields uh, that uh, in the in the 1800s. Uh, so it's very interesting. And uh, it's written that they use uh, wooden poles and with uh, ropes of um, of straw. Uh, so it were ropes of straw that uh, were used as the metal conductor. Uh, it were ropes of straw from the top to the earth. So it's strange, but probably uh, straw, uh, 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 like even a wooden pole, have certain effects, uh, have also a, a, a conduction uh, capacity of electricity, uh, but less than metal. Uh, straw uh, probably has more conduction. Uh, if we imagine the context, if it's uh, like a stormy weather, it rains, then the straw, the rope will become wet and it, it become a conductor. Uh, so it's uh, probably, uh, it's an idea, uh, uh, it's, but it's interesting. Uh? Um, uh, maybe uh, they don't have all the details in the book. Uh? Maybe you have maybe uh, other materials that were used, but we can, we can easily understand they don't use metal because in those times metal was very expensive. Uh, today it's very cheap in comparison uh, with our uh, with with uh, what we earn. In those times, uh, 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 they were very poor. Uh, they were rich in another way, but uh, <laughs> they they uh, on material level they, they didn't have so much. Uh, possibilities as today yeah uh, here another uh, that's interesting co co uh, in co in in relation to canada because they speak about uh, electrical niagara <laughs> like the niagara falls <laughs> and uh, here you you see a pole that is 40 meters high and this was uh, put in, in the Beaujolais, and that's the region where you have a lot of hail uh, uh, in history and every year in France. It's uh, a region where you have a lot of farms, a lot of uh, uh, wine growers and, um, and apple growers too, uh, but they have a lot of hail damage too. And so they have put like a pole of 40 meters high, for example, so they, they knew uh, uh, really, the science of that time in 1910, uh, it's written, uh, they, they knew about because uh, here, if they put a poll like this, it's uh, that uh, the politics is also agree that the sciences agree, otherwise, they cannot do that. Uh, today, you cannot put a poll like this in your garden without the agreement <laughs> of all, uh, all the authorities. So so uh, it's interesting to see that and that it was lost after, almost after uh, World War II. We don't hear any more about this in science. Uh, it's like it doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, it's, um, and now today they, they sell all kind of other techniques that doesn't work. <laughs> so uh, yes, that's about the, Schumann waves, uh, uh, probably those antennas works also as radio antennas, probably, but it's a hypothesis. We'll talk more about this in the next presentation about the round towers. Um, here, an example from my garden with uh, uh, raspberries, uh, framboise uh, in French. Uh, that were like two meter fifty high, uh, close to my antennas. Uh, so uh, uh, it's in in normally they become like one meter fifty high, but as soon as you put an antenna, you will see if you put now an antenna like this close to your raspberries, you will see they will become like 
half a meter or one meter higher easily. And sometimes I have a customer or a friend that has uh, raspberries of three meters high sometimes, three meters. So it's very, and they become like uh, trees with branches with raspberries on it in place of having just one uh, stick with the raspberries, uh, the flowers, you have like really branches on it. <laughs> they, they, it shows that they have really a lot of energy. Yeah? Mm. So how to make them? Uh, you can use copper wire, you can use uh, galvanized uh, steel wire of, uh, like this, like you see in the shops. Uh, here's an example from a local shop here. Uh, so uh, it's all materials you can find easily everywhere, uh, quite cheap. Huh? Uh, how you can use it for your greenhouse? Yes, of course, it will almost not work inside the greenhouse. If you put the antenna inside, uh, uh, it, it will not work very well. It's better to put the antenna outside high, like you see on the picture, and then you cut the wire, uh, the wire through the oil inside and then you will have really huge results in your uh, greenhouse. Last year uh, I've put that greenhouse you see on this picture that was the first year of that greenhouse and uh, I had never so much um, results as this year. It was really fantastic. Uh, it was a uh, growth like, uh, like I never saw. It was really uh, amazing, yeah. And no any disease I had, uh, and uh, I had, uh, I had a very little problem, but I don't know the name. Uh, that sometimes the tomato at the bottom was a little black, but it was only at a certain place. But uh, uh, almost no problem, uh, no no mildew, nothing. Uh, it was uh, really uh, a big road, yeah. Uh, but I, di I did uh, not only this antenna, I did also a lot of different techniques uh, uh, of electroculture. So I cannot, it's uh, difficult to say um, what are the techniques that work the most uh, when you do different things together. <laughs> but uh, uh, for sure, I'm, I'm convinced the antenna had huge effect because I had another greenhouse that you see on the left and there I didn't have the antenna. And I had a lot less results in that other greenhouse. So, and uh, and otherwise, I did uh, almost the same uh, the same crops, uh, also tomatoes and some other crops. Uh, that's a picture of different ways you can energize the water. Uh, but this is a picture where where there is an element more. Uh, that is um, a beeswax uh, capacitor or beeswax condensator. Um, and that's also a whole subject. Uh, you can put that in the line of the electricity flow, like a beeswax capacitor is like two plates of copper that are uh, connected to the wires or the electrodes, uh, one to the antenna and the other to the to the electrode or the water or the, the or, or or what you want. And um, and in between the two plates, you put beeswax. Uh, you put the two plates like around one centimeter uh, from each other or, or half a centimeter. Um, uh, close to each other, but isolated from each other with beeswax. And beeswax has also uh, specific uh, properties. Uh, it's like a cosmic antenna. There is even a book called uh, Beeswax, the Cosmic Antenna. <laughs> so uh, where they, they, they talk a little bit about those mysterious uh, effects of beeswax. And uh, so you, that's, that's a way you can uh, put uh, the what you could call the beeswax uh, energy <laughs> uh, collector uh, also connected uh, to the antenna. Uh, like I put also beeswax around my magnetic antennas. Uh, here you can also use it like this. This works very well to energize the water, the water really uh, very well. 
Also, ah, yes, also to energize water. When you energize water like this and it freezes in springtime, a little frost, or like minus one, minus two, you will see that the water will not freeze. And the water that is not energized will freeze. It can have a huge effect like this. When the water has more uh, vital energy or organ energy, uh, you will see that it will, uh, 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 it will take longer time to begin to freeze. In a certain way. Huh? You see different drawings. How you can uh, use an antenna? You can just put the antenna in the soil without anything more, or you can put, like you see on the right, uh, like uh, um, an iron fence or metal fence around, like in a radius or one or two or three meters or even more. If the antenna is very high, you can put the fence uh, further away eh? in a circle. And then you, I, I showed with the land uh, how the plants will grow. It will create like an homogeneous um, energy field um, uh, uh, in comparison with outside of the fence and inside of the fence. Uh, you can also use it like on the left with two kind of fences uh, uh, put in the earth. And then you will also have that kind of effect. Um, uh, but I don't really use it like this because it's a lot of work. Uh, I try to work less. <laughs> But uh, but uh, you, uh, you you don't need to make it so complicated. Um, but uh, the idea on the right is interesting. If you make like a tower, little tower, and you put a lot of uh, organic material like your compost and everything, you can just put an antenna in the middle, and uh, it will grow even better. You will have uh, record results and fantastic results. It's very easy to do. Um, Oh, that's very interesting uh, um, testimonial and, and uh, scientific research. It's from Martine Kerel. Uh, she did, uh, she did, uh, she was student of uh, to become a pharmacist in the eighties, and um, and on twenty eight May eighty four, she uh, she showed her thesis a research about uh, the effect of uh, an atmospheric antenna like this with the fence around on uh, certain medicinal plants like mint and datura. And she measured uh, uh, like uh, more than 20% more growth of the plants. And there was a nutritional value. There was 20% more in mint. Um, uh, yes, it was in dry matter. Uh, the dry matter they measure in science of plants uh, with electroculture and on datura. It's also a medicinal plant uh, where they ex extract some molecules for the heart and our blood. And um, uh, they, there she had 30% more dry matter. And uh, in essential oils, he measured 27% more essential oils in the mint. And on that, you have 57% more. So that's very, very interesting because it shows that the plants are bigger with electroculture, but also more nutrient dense. I showed already uh, on the German experiment and here uh, our research and here that's a French uh, more recent uh, research that shows it again. Uh, um, and that's completely in, in, uh, in opposition with the traditional conventional chemical theories of uh, fertilization. Because with uh, uh, the, the chemical fertilizers of uh, nitrogen, potassium and, um, and, and phosphor, the plants become bigger 
but they become weaker. It's like they dilute uh, the toxins and then they absorb more water and they become more bigger, uh, like some humans sometimes too, uh, when they eat uh, bad food, uh, they become also bigger, even if they don't eat much. Well, the plants, it's quite similar. Then you, you have to dilute the toxins, otherwise you die. <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, the plants then, like you take a lettuce, if it's uh, grown with chemical fertilizers or, or with bad energy uh, and it becomes old in your fridge, it will rot, it will, be, it will begin to rot. And then it will smell very badly. And uh, when you have a good organic lettuce, in most cases, it will not rot. It will just dehydrate and it will just dry out, but it will not rot. That, that's a big difference when the, uh, how you can measure also the quality of the energy of, 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 a, of a crop or fruit or vegetables. It's how they will preserve over time. Uh, so that's one of the secondary very beneficial effects is that the plants grown with electroculture, they will preserve a lot longer time. So you, you will be able to, uh, to hold them very uh, a, a longer time in winter uh, than uh, other uh, crops. Um, yeah, so that's interesting phenomenon. Also, Sometimes uh, people think, yes, if you uh, 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 if the plants become bigger, they will be less uh, they will have less nutrient content. But that's because they are they 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 have that thinking or that idea because that's what we see mostly uh, with uh, with artificial fertilizers. But with electroculture, it's the opposite. With electroculture, you have to see this completely differently. It's when the plant feels good, is in the good energy, it will grow naturally bigger because it, it's, it's, it's in good energies. And then it will have also more nutrient content. And with artificial way of, of, uh, of, uh, of fertilization, there is the opposite. The plants are like forced. They don't feel good. <laughs> they, they are like forced, they are like, uh, 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 yes, they are forced to, to grow and, uh, and, and they, they, they have done uh, uh, nutrients that are, are sometimes toxic molecules because of the stress and uh, in comparison. Huh? So it's not only the nutrient content, but also the quality of the nutrients that uh, changes too. Huh? An example there is, yes, uh, the, we have a lot of examples like this. Uh, yes, I wanted to give an example of, of GMO corn, for example. If you give, you take organic corn and GMO corn to birds, the birds don't want, or the rats, they don't want to eat the GMO corn. They just want to eat the, the organic corn. <laughs> uh, they will only eat the GMO if really they have nothing else to eat. Uh, um, so here, that's an example close to a garden of a friend. He have put a very high antenna like this, like you see in the back. And in the field of the farmer that was just uh, close uh, in the radius of 30 meters of his garden and the antenna, the, he had like a double yield of corn. <laughs> Uh, in comparison with the other uh, side of the field. So it was really a big uh, difference. And I'm, uh, so I show uh, on the, um, the picture of the corn. On the left, you see one corn from one plant. And on the right, you have two corns on the plants that were in a radius of, uh, of uh, 30 meters around the antenna. So, and it was an antenna that was around six, seven meters high, I think. Um, so it was very interesting to see. There were sometimes people asking me, ah, yes, but, uh, or farmers, ah, yes, if I put an antenna in my garden uh, or in my field, uh, will it also benefit to my neighbor? 
then I say yes, probably uh, if it's uh, if it's close uh, to your antenna, and then. Um, if they are good minded, they will say, ah, oh, yes, it's nice. And if they are bad minded, then they say, ah, oh, no, I don't want to benefit to my, my neighbor. <laughs> then I don't want uh, to put the antenna. <laughs> but uh, it's it's very good. Uh, you will radiate positive energies and it will be uh, good for everyone around. I hear a picture of the the same uh, garden on the left and um, uh, and the antenna and the, and the cornfield. Uh, I hear in the, at the chicken coop, you can also use electroculture to improve uh, uh, the well-being of your chickens. For example, you can put an antenna and connect the wire under the place where they lay the eggs, for example or also uh, connect the wire uh, with, uh, with the water they drink, for example. Uh, this works very well too. Uh, so it's a nice picture. <clears throat> ah, yes, if you put um, antennas under the egg and the chicken, when they breed the uh, eggs, uh, it will breed in 20 days or even uh, less in place of 21 days. Normally, it's 21 days uh, for chickens to, to make a little, um, little uh, chickens. Um, and, uh, uh, but uh, with the energy of the antenna, you will gain like one or two days. And I saw it already uh, in, um, in a breeding machine. I put uh, some electroculture uh, techniques and uh, uh, it's always almost one day uh, before that it uh, that they come out. Uh, so that's very interesting. Yeah. So other examples how you can use uh, with the wires, and I, I show with uh, some plants how they will grow. If you connect an antenna with a wire to the north, then you will really see the difference between on the south side and the north side. If you don't put a wire to the north and just uh, just stick in the in the soil like this, then the effect will be all around. And uh, the closer to the antenna, the more you will have effect. Uh, here you see this on on the white. Uh, the closer to the antenna, the more you will have effect. But if you put a, a wire. Uh, Fence around, then the effect will be more homogeneous, uh, will be more equal. Um, also, with the, like on the left, when you have a wire um, under the soil like this, oriented south north, then you will also see that uh, effect that the further away from the wire, the less effect. And almost one meter away, you will ha have almost no effect anymore. Uh, that's why you, uh, Christophe Lowe put a uh, wire every one meter 50 or every two meters, but it's better every one meter 50 or even closer. If, if, if you have enough wires, you can even put every 50 centimeters too. Uh, it's even better. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, that was at uh, a garden of a friend of Raphael. Uh, that had also huge sunflowers. So we have seen raspberries respond very well, uh, very quickly to electroculture energies. Uh, sunflowers too, you will see uh, huge results with sunflowers. Um, also rhubarb too, but most plants, uh, lettuce too. I had a friend, he in his greenhouse, he has put uh, uh, magnetic antennas and basalt and and then the people around, they call his greenhouse the Chernobyl greenhouse because everything became uh, very huge, uh, enormous, and they didn't understand. And then they, they called it uh, the Chernobyl uh, greenhouse, like from, uh, <laughs> from uh, the, the, the Chernobyl catastrophe. Um, uh, but it, it was really amazing. And he had latches of 50 centimeters uh, diameter. Uh, so really huge lettuce uh, 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 in his greenhouse. Mm. 
so here that is a book uh, below you see an old picture of the book of Justa Christophe Lou, uh, the original book or one of his original books I have also an original book that I found that is older that is a book that you see on the picture from 1925 around huh? and I had found a book uh, the one of the first uh, little uh, that is from 1920 I'll show you that's that's this one ah, so yeah, you see that that was probably one of the first because there are not so much pages less than the other and uh, yeah so very you see so over time every year we find back uh, old documents new ones we we are never finished and sometimes uh, people find back in the libraries of their grandparents somewhere or on the flea market or <laughs> somewhere uh, it comes uh, uh, if God wants he shows us <laughs> um, so here you see on the top in my garden uh, with the lupine plants uh, for the flowers that became huge too um, are very nice um, yeah how to install close to a tree uh, that's a friend uh, close to Lyon that has made his antenna and you see Topinambour or uh, in English, Jerusalem artichokes of three meter fifty tall, so it's very high. Huh? Uh, and then also the the uh, it's not a potato, but the what it's uh, under the soil, it becomes really very big, huh? like as big as a big potato. Huh? It's not a little, so it's also more easy in the kitchen to to prepare to 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 uh, prepare. Uh, uh whatever you want uh, for eating because in the past people didn't like that very much because it was little so it was much work to make it clean and everything but uh, but with electroculture it's a lot bigger so it becomes a lot more interesting as a vegetable also it grows almost everywhere so it's uh, really easy to grow uh, and and you can hold it the whole winter also uh in the soil, it doesn't uh, it doesn't die from the frost, uh, the, so it, there's not really a problem. Uh, now, the frost in Canada, if it's minus twenty, I don't know, uh, but uh, if it's minus five or ten, it's no problem for that plant. Mm. Uh, yes, again. Another friend that shows his uh, huge cauliflowers uh, uh, with his antennas was very happy with. Uh, uh, that, that's a friend that had uh, raspberries of three meter tall, uh, two meter uh, ninety five, uh, to me to be more precise. And you see the picture of his antenna in the back. Uh, he put also some echina spirals uh, that were very interesting. And also he had um, a zucchini that were that became really very big, uh, like uh, two meter in diameter, uh, really very big ones. And I asked all with almost no fertilizers uh, or just organic fertilizers. Uh, all my friends they don't use uh, chemical fertilizers, uh, only uh, some organic uh, material or manure. And and some here, like you see in that garden, you have a lot of straw on the on the soil. In other gardens, it's um, uh, the soil. You can see the soil. Uh, everybody do like he 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 likes them, but uh, um, uh, it will work in all kind of gardens. Uh, it's good to have practices that stimulates life in the soil because. It works together with electroculture. So the more you will stimulate life, the more electroculture will also stimulate it, and the more you will have uh, effect. If your soil is dead, um, 
uh, electroculture will help to stimulate life, but uh, the 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 improvement will be less than if if it's already living. Uh, so uh, it's it's logic. Huh? Uh, um, but it will uh, also work, but it, you will have less results than if, if you have already a lot of organic material and a lot of good uh, microorganisms in your soil. Another example of, of uh, another guy, that's a guy that just followed my videos uh, a few years ago. And uh, um, and then uh, his daughter uh, to told him, ah, did you uh, did you send your testimonial to uh, to Yannick to the guy from who you learned uh, the, those techniques? And then he was thinking about this, and then he sent me an SMS on my phone, and it was written, look, because of you, look at the difficulties of harvest because he had to carry his daughter high up to uh, to yield the tomatoes and in the past he never had so huge tomatoes in his life uh, he he normally they they became like around two meters high in his garden and there he had tomato plants of four up to four meters high huh? and this was just with iron uh, rebars in his soil uh, um, uh, dressed uh, to the sky and connected with wires uh, in his uh, garden. Uh, it was uh, so. In his garden, there was no copper. Sometimes people now are telling uh, copper there, copper here. Uh, it need always to be copper. No, uh, it depends on the techniques for atmospheric antennas. You can very well do uh, the antennas with uh, iron and, and or galvanized steel it will work also very good. Uh, or, or you can do it also with copper, huh? but it, it, it doesn't really need to be copper. So if you have uh, iron uh, uh, wires, it will work very well too. So um, some pictures of my models, uh, you can find on my internet site, uh, on my shop or, or but you have now also other people making uh, antennas and selling them, or you can make yourself too. Uh, uh, if you want to support my work, the most easy it's to go on my shop and uh, and and buy uh, um, an item that you can use, or um, it will be very useful <laughs> for you. Or you can, or if you want to. To make me a lot of pleasure uh, or a lot of make me happy, you can also just send your testimonials. Uh, it's uh, that's what's me what makes me the most the most happy. <laughs> so here some books or titles of books you have in English. You have uh, about those kind of antennas. The best book would be Electroculture from Justin Christophe Lo. Um, uh, there will uh, be other books coming out um, uh, in the coming weeks and months. Uh, you will see because now electroculture is developing fast. Uh, and so uh, different people are, are, are writing their testimonials and, and, uh, and sharing them. And, and I'm also making uh, books and uh, new books. Uh, and um, I will also make a book about this technique. Uh, I hope to to be able to bring it out uh, and also in English. But first I do all my books in French because it's uh, for me most easy to write. And then uh, directly after uh, it will be translated uh, in English too. So I hope uh, you appreciated the the presentation, and uh, I give the word to Angela. <laughs> ah, we don't hear you. Put the sound. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is so exciting. I can uh, I can tell everyone's wheels are turning, and I'm getting many messages. Okay. So let's uh, be very, very succinct in our questions, okay, everyone, because we want to make sure that we get to all of them. So let's be very succinct. I do have some questions that are very simple to answer, I hope. 
Uh, one is about the fencing material. When you put it around in a circle with an antenna in the middle, the fencing material is completely closed. Yes, not like a Lakofsky yes. coil. So it's completely yes. closed. Okay. Yes. Um, the next question is about the frequency of plants. You said, for example, that rhubarb responds very well to the atmospheric antenna in particular. So have you noticed in your research, in your work, um, that some plants respond and some plants do not? Uh, uh, they, they, y y y yes, uh, they all respond, but some plants will respond a lot more and other uh, less. Huh? So, uh, but most of the vegetables, I saw very good results uh, on most of plants. But an ex um, uh, but it's also with time, with uh, the more we get testimonials and precise testimonials where the people explain which technique exactly they used uh, and which results they had. Uh, if we put that all together, we will have like a broader picture, a more precise picture of which plants responds to which techniques the most. For the moment, we are in the beginning of that, um, yes, that uh, that research. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, what I what I saw already, and also from past times, you have. Uh, uh, even commercials or articles from the years 20s where they already speak about rhubarb and they say 350% more rhubarb with uh, atmospheric antenna. So uh, with antenna of, of crystal flu. It's not all plants that will uh, multiply by three or four the, the, the yield. Huh? So uh, the, I say always to be, um, to be uh, careful I say uh, you will increase by 30% your growth and yield. But uh, it's, and so uh, everybody is happy because then when it's more, they are happy. If it's less, they are not happy. So, uh, so uh, it, it's, it's better than they, than they observe a double growth and then they say, wow, it's even more. <laughs> Yes, uh, we have to manage expectations. Okay, um, let's move to Tammy because Tammy has a very uh, tangible example to show you of something she's been working on this weekend. Tammy, I've okay. gave you a uh, screen share capabilities if you need it, but I'm going to pin you if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Go for it. There you are. Um, I guess it's best to show the screen first and then... Okay. Uh, to respond to the question of the material of the of the fence, it's it's it works with uh, normal fences in in galvanized steel wire. Uh, it it works very well. Mm. Wonderful. Um, yeah. So I thought I'd show the backyard, um, the setup. So I've got an eight foot arbor, and then I've got metal chain link fence. I, uh, maybe the yeah. men in this group will know what material that is. Um, but as I was looking at your slides, I was like, oh, the fence could perhaps be used as well in electroculture. Yes. Um, and then here, I'll just stop sharing. So here you can connect in your garden, mm -hmm. like you have that uh, structure in wood. You have four poles. You can uh, put an antenna, a, a big iron pole or rebar or, or telescopic uh that you use the the poles of your structure to to hold it and so you can go a lot higher and okay. so and then you connect with the wire uh in your garden and to, and also to the fence so all the plants close to the fence will grow better the the, the fence will be used to to the fence will be used to spread the energy also yeah, I didn't even think about that today until I saw your slides that the fence could integrate with. Okay, and then something that um, that you can buy here really easily in the hardware store is this braided copper. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so what we did was uh, <laughs> just cut some off and then we just unbraided the top to create like an antenna. Yes, you can do that. It's very good. I just wanted to mention it to the group because I thought this was like a really minimum Easy. viable antenna for people. Yeah. 
because it's cheap and it's easy. This took like maybe 10 minutes, right? So uh, we were originally thinking about this off the top of the arbor, but what you're saying is like perhaps something even taller. So that could be interesting. Yes, you can even take a bamboo stick very high and then put uh, the wire that you have in your hands uh, uh, on the stick. And because the higher you will go, the, the more you will have effect. In your little garden, if you put a high antenna, it will cover your wall garden. It will influence your wall garden. If you, yeah, well, that's what if, I was thinking. If you know, if you do already your garden since uh, several years, you have some, some knowledge about how it grows. Then if you put an antenna now, you will see it will be all different. It will be, uh, it will be a uh, double. It will be an amazing growth. I don't know if I want to double my zucchini production, but <laughs> <laughs> Golly. Uh, you, you, you would need to run uh, to, to, uh, to pick them up. Otherwise, if you wait uh, one day longer, they will be double. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the rhubarb. I mean, my whole backyard could be one rhubarb by the looks of it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Thanks very much. Okay, let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at Maya's project next. This is Maya's orchard. Okay, and it's you. Can you see my cursor moving? Yes. Yes. Okay. Maya has a strip. Uh, Maya, I'm going to pass it to you in a moment. She has a strip here of trees with uh, it's a food forest setup. Another strip here. Then she has a variety of apple trees, older apple trees. And she also has this perimeter of very, very tall trees. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And what is the orientation? Um, away from us, away from us is facing south. We are on the north end of the orchard. Oh, ah, yes, yes. Okay. Maya, do you want to ask specific questions of Yannick? Uh, sure, hi Yannick. Um, so, my original intent was to do the wire with the magnet and the beeswax just kind of running along these two small rows yes. where the two the young trees are, the two rows. Uh, but then Angela suggested that we combine um, or do one or the other or combine the antennas as well. So, so um, the whole space there, including the big trees and actually Behind the bigger apple trees is also a giant raspberry patch, and I have some hardy kiwis growing as well. Um, the whole space there, I would say, is probably about half an acre total. Um, so I guess I would just ask, if, you know, how many antennas, or what would your recommendation be? What we can best do there? I would. Um... We will see also other techniques like, like the round tower that can be very interesting in, in that field. Huh? Uh, but uh, like it's oriented almost north-south or south-north, I would put an antenna, a big one at the south, uh, like you, your idea is, is good to put uh, on each row of trees, those little trees, uh, to put a, a wire with, an ant with a magnet on the south and then on the on the south you can also put that atmospheric antenna but a, a high one uh, how, how much meters is it from the big trees like 10 20 um, 30 yeah from the big the, trees to the start of where the little orchard trees are is probably yeah. about 50 feet so 50 feet it's like uh at uh, uh, 20 meters yeah roughly 20 I would say. 50, 30, 60 around. feet yeah. yes if you put an antenna of or of six meters high it will work i think because the, the trees are like between 20 and 30 meters high probably they they look very tall so if you're at 20 meters distance it's okay Yes, or 15 meters already, ah, but uh, I think it, uh, but too close it will not work, but I think you, you try to be the further as possible, uh, so at the beginning of your row, uh, uh, or, or you can also put, um, yes, uh, I, I would put it on the, the big atmospheric antenna at, at, the, at the row in the middle, 
uh, on the south side. Yes, and then close to your big trees, apple trees, there you can also put a, a big antenna in the middle or a round tower too. Um, and then you will cover almost your whole uh, uh, half an acre, I think. Mm. And would and you then, suggest, oh, sorry. And around the trees, you can put a basalt. There is one of your group that sent me some basalt that is very good. I measured it, it was around 4,800 micro CGS, but there's a very good uh, level uh, um, in, uh, of, of what uh, Phil Callahan told. So I think it's very good basalt. And also to make the round towers and to, to spread around the trees. Uh, so uh, you spread a few kilos around each tree and you can put the, the, the basalt in a pyramid before then it will energize with the energy of the pyramid also. You can see the basalt as a little antennas that will connect with the energy of the big antennas. Like we have our mobile phone and we have big antennas. <laughs> well, the, the basalt is, is the little antennas in the earth uh, uh, that, that will transmit the energy of the big antennas. <laughs> uh, I see it like this. Yeah, so it will increase even the Thank effect. you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Maria. Just oh. one super quick question. Would you suggest to attach a wire from the atmospheric antenna to magnetic uh, wire on the ground or would, is that oh, not can. necessary then if I'm able? Yes, you, uh, yes. You, you want to make grown your trees more than the grass. Uh, so uh, it's good if you want to put a wire close to your trees in the soil, uh, you can connect to the atmospheric antenna and then you are sure that uh, trees will benefit the most of it. Um, you can also put one atmospheric antenna and connect the two rows of the trees. Huh? Uh, you, you, you put a wire on the two rows and you connect to the same uh, antenna. Uh, 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 be sure to make it yeah, high enough, but um, uh, above the trees and it will work. That's, that's for sure. Too. And if you do it now, you will see already results uh, the, the, this spring and summertime. Huh? Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yannick. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. And, uh, and uh, I'm curious to see the result. <laughs> I will definitely be sharing for sure. Yeah, yeah thank, you. thank you. Brenda has a similar project, Yannick. Um, Brenda, you're there. Yes, love. There she is. Yes. OK, your question is about um, which field to choose for atmospheric antennas and how many antennas you would use. And you've calculated here the area for us in hectares, yes? Ah, yes. OK, I see. Meters, oh, yeah. <clears throat> In kilometers or meters. Yes, it's a 200 meter. Yeah. Uh, in big fields, if you put atmospheric antennas, you need uh, uh, quite a lot. Huh? But um, I, I would say every 20 to 30 meters, you, you, put, uh, you put one. Uh, uh, so. Uh, for example, if it's um, 100 meters uh, side, I see 77 meters, 100 meters. Um, uh, you, you make like two rows in the middle and every 20, 30 meter, you put an antenna. So it's a lot of antennas. Huh? If, if, if you do it with, with the atmospheric antennas, huh? uh, uh, so if it's 235 meters long, it's around uh, 5, 10. It's two rows of 10 antennas of, of, uh, of 4 to 6 meters. Uh, it's better 6 meters high. So it's uh, two rows of, of, uh, of 10 antennas, approximately. Yeah? Okay. Uh, if you use uh, iron rebars or 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 uh, telescopic poles, it can be quite cheap. It eh? depends uh, what, what, what you buy and what you make yourself. Mm -hmm. eh? 
Um, what uh, if she's growing sunflowers that are going to go really tall? Would that impact the height that you're recommending? No, it, uh, the sunflowers will never go bigger than your antennas, huh? or, to, 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 or it would be a really uh, amazing. Huh? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> hey, but don't they, have stretch goals. <laughs> if, you, if you use, if you seed normal sunflowers uh, for agriculture, then they will stay, they will become a little bit higher but uh, the is the flower that will become a lot bigger and and and, the, and that is what you yield it's the seeds and so in the flower uh, from the flower so uh, it will double the yield in this in the way that the flowers will be a lot bigger um, yeah. because that's the energy if you use sunflowers for decorative purposes uh, that are very huge for example yes then they will become also even more huge and 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 also with the big flower the bigger flower it depends on what do you want to cultivate on that uh, land on that uh, big uh, uh, place is it for orchard or or crops or or different uh, what what do you want to cultivate? Um, well, it's our first year, as I mentioned last time, was um, it's our first year taking the farm back. And I've been recommended to put in something that'll go really deep, which would either be corn or sunflowers. We'll have a really nice deep root. root. Ah, yes. Okay. Um, so <laughs> um, that's what I think we're going to do, maybe a mix of that. Yeah, different areas. Yeah. Brenda's project is especially exciting because what she's doing is transitioning a traditionally farmed uh, agricultural space. So it's being sprayed with glyphosate and other materials at the moment. And she's making this transition and she's going to use electroculture to help her do that. So that's why yeah. her project is so exciting because when her project goes well, mm -hmm. everyone will know that this is how it can be done, right? That's what we're advocating for is to obliterate mm -hmm. glyphosate use in Canada and everywhere. So this is a really exciting project. Way to go, Brenda. We're really proud of you and really love your project. Okay, <laughs> let's move to Paul. Paul, who sent you the, um, the uh, sample of basalt here. Here's Paul. Paul, what's your question today for Yannick? We can oh, hear you. There. There, there you go. Okay. Uh, the question I have, uh, Yannick, is, is I've got a, a 20 meter tall uh, barn. We have uh, lightning rods on the top of it right now uh, that actually aren't connected even to the ground anymore. They've brought it off over the years before we bought the farm. But if I was to put an, uh, an antenna on the end of the one of the barns, would I be able to uh, run uh, wires off of that and then run additional wires through my uh, garlic field, which is approximately, it's about an acre, uh, it's about uh, it's just a little over a hectare. Yes, and your lighting rod on your barn or or at, at which distance of your hectare field? Of your um, it would be approximately uh, it would be approximately 75 to 100 meters to uh, the corner of the field. And then I could run wires from there through my field as well as perpendicular to north south. Oh, that's, to uh, that's maybe a too, too, uh, too, too far away. Uh, too far away, to, okay. Yes, I think if it was just really close, it, it's. Uh, uh, I, I don't think if it's if it's so far away, you can if it's really north south direction. It uh, is a and, north south. It, the, the field the field is south of uh, uh, the field is north of the barn. Ah yes yes ah yes. Then if you put a wire really north south, uh, maybe you can uh, propagate the energy also of the antenna to the to the field, uh, but. If you put it really uh, oriented south to north uh, to the field, and and you can even put a magnetic antenna on uh, uh, also uh, on the same wire, yes, the south, huh? and uh, 
Yes, uh, yes, you can do that. Or you can also put uh, antennas directly in your field uh, uh, because it will be maybe more easy to do than may putting a wire of 100 meters from from your barn to your field it's uh, 100 meters huh? <laughs> it's also well, yeah no it's 100 meters i i was just going to use a, a, a galvanized fencing wire which we have rather a lot of here on the farm to, yes, yes. to run it yes you can use that yes but I did, I did also get uh, some uh, extension poles that uh, they used in the cleaning industry here in, uh, in Ontario. Uh, and it, they're, uh, they're 12 feet. Uh, so it's a three meter, uh, well, actually four meter uh, antennas. Yeah, that's it's good. Well. That you can use in your field. You can also use your lighting rod that is on the barn to energize the water. If you, if you spray things on your even fertilizers or or any or even or kind of organic products or whatever uh, if you spray things in your field you can also use your lighting rod that is on the barn connect with a wire to your spray solution and this will energize the 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 water and you will bring also that energy through uh, to the to the field so, so sometimes with just energizing water and spraying one time or giving to the plants in irrigation even one time can can make huge difference over the whole life of the plant it can sometimes also increase a lot of yields just by by uh, by giving one time energized to water uh, I I was the gentleman that sent you uh, the basalt for testing and uh, it's my neighbor that has it. And uh, that's what I'm planning on uh, taking the basalt and, uh, and spreading it through, through the field as well. Um, yeah, yes, yes. What, what would your, uh, approximately, what would your uh, application rate be? Uh, would, you, would you put as much of a, as a ton to an acre? Or a ton to a hectare, I mean? Uh, yes, yes, I put, I advise all and friends. I advise always minimum one ton a hectare. Okay. But but in 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 the practice, sometimes people put less because of the price or things like that. Uh, uh, but when you put less, you will also have less results. <laughs> as, as simple as that. But it will always be better than nothing. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, 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 but there are also people that put 10 times more, 10 ton a hectare. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the more you will put, the, the more you will increase the paramagnetism and the more you will, uh, you will uh, increase uh, yes, the microorganism and so on of the soil. Um, but I would say already with one ton a hectare, you can have already very good effects. Uh, okay. um, and I, you have, can... I, I have in the past, uh, uh, many years ago, not knowing anything about paramagnetism at the time, I did add approximately uh, one ton to uh, a half uh, uh, hectare. And uh, I had very good results. I, I didn't realize why it was at the time. <laughs> It was just, uh, I, I was I was just using it as a field supplement to, at that time. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, in, in the organic um, farming in France, for example, or in Europe, they, they knew it as a kind of uh, supplement of magnesium and things like that uh, uh, from, from basalt. Uh, uh, but that doesn't explain uh, all the effects of the basalt, uh, but it's also interesting. Uh, uh, but that's uh, the the chemical point of view. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it, it's but it's also interesting. Uh, but basalt will also work if you put basalt in a in a, in a plastic bag under the plant. The plant grow better. So it's not. Even if the roots doesn't touch us or cannot uh, uh, take or, or, or erode uh, basalt, if, if they are just in, in uh, close to the basalt, uh, 
the, it will radiate a kind of energy that will uh, help the plants growing. And even more, Phil Callahan did some research with uh, Fritz Pop. It's a researcher about bioluminescence or biophotons uh, from Germany in the past. And he discovered that all living organisms and living cells emits uh, uh, light photons. And the more uh, energy we have, or the more uh, 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 energy, or the more healthy or the microorganism or the living cells, the more they emit biophotons, or light photons. But it's very uh, uh, weak uh, light. Huh? You cannot see it with your eyes. You need uh, very sensitive photo uh, receptors and uh, electronics to measure the, the light emitting by a uh, living organism. But uh, with today's uh, technology, you, you can uh, measure that even more easily. And that's, that's one of my ideas too. Uh, one, one day it's to be able to make a, a device that will be portable to measure that uh, because uh, Fritz Pop, he did this in his laboratory with, uh, with devices of the 90s, but in the, they were very expensive. But in the 90s, the, 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 the devices to measure bio, uh, photons, light, were a lot more expensive than today. Today, with uh, all the development of cameras that are very high resolution, uh, uh, the prices of, of, of cameras uh, or very sensitive cameras are very cheap in comparison with the 90s. And, um, and so now I, th ah, yes, and what I w wanted to say is that when uh, Phil Callahan went to uh, Fritz Pop, he asked him, uh, can you measure the basalt if it emits uh, light? And then he said, no, uh, that's a uh, rock. Uh, I never saw a rock uh, emitting light. Uh, it's only uh, living organisms that emits light uh, and so on. And then he, 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 and he said that uh, Balt also emits uh, light photons. And wow. even more, when he mixed it with uh, compost that is very rich in microorganisms, he, he measured that the light from the microorganism, from the compost, was uh, like multiplied by 100. So when it was in contact with basalt, yes, really, uh, it became very, uh, a lot more active. Uh, so, and, and uh, it was really multiplied like by 100. And uh, I, I've, I've made a book about, uh, to share all that knowledge, uh, it's basalt and paramagnetism. Uh, it will come out uh, in the coming uh, days <laughs> or week in French, and in, it's already translated in English. And I think in, in uh, I hope in two or three weeks it will be uh, in English available, where I, I share that uh, experiment too. And um, so it's very interesting because uh, the basalt, in combination with the microorganism, will stimulate really the life force energy and the, the, the biophotons emitted by microorganisms. And the plants, their roots are like our hair. They are like uh, uh, fiber optics, the, the roots. They, they collect also the light. It's not only nutrients. It's only, it's really, they are really kind of antennas and also uh, uh, like uh, their work, like fiber optics too, that, that collects uh, light. If we could have eyes that were really very sensitive, we, we could see a plant as a light being or all living organism or would be like really uh, light beings. And, and when you have more energy, you will emit more light. And when you have less energy, you will emit less light. Uh, you, you see that already. Already we all feel that when we are tired or somebody is tired, he is like uh, more uh, absorbing our energy. Huh? Uh, it can be good for him and it's also good. Huh? 
uh, but when somebody has really a lot of energy is really radiating uh, uh, and it influences all around uh, well uh, on plants uh, too uh, uh, what, what we feel like the idea that that living organism emits light it's a real scientific uh, fact too that can be measured with devices and when we speak about light it, it goes even further it's not just photons light is also frequencies you have all the colors of the rainbow in the light huh? so uh, maybe in future times we could uh, measure it so uh, precisely that maybe we could measure that one plant will emit more red light and another more blue light and another more of this of this frequency and that can give even more information about their health about uh, also what they need probably um, and that would be also uh, a good um, scientific instrument to measure life energy in a certain way and the effects of the the different kind of antennas or our, or also our practices uh, and because then we, we could go in the garden and take samples and measure and say, ah, you, uh, em your plants or your soil emits like 150% uh, uh, light level compared with the neighbor. It's uh, with chemicals, it's only 50% uh, light. Or, or, and that's, that is also why um, I grew. Uh, agro uh, food industry doesn't want those kind of techniques uh, happening uh, because uh, it's not in their uh, advantage. Huh? Uh, when you can measure life force and, and living energy, uh, uh, that, that's not what they want because all industrial processes uh, reduces that life energy. And, and, uh, and, 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 and so um that that's the big problem huh? and uh, that's why it's important to eat uh, fresh foods uh, it's different uh, than uh, old foods uh, that are maybe chemical edible uh, after five years in uh, <laughs> with uh, 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 in uh, in a jar but uh, if it's not a living uh, it's it will not give you real energy uh, it will just be a chemical uh, substance <laughs> uh, we yeah. don't have time to talk about this right now but Matteo Tavera's, Tavera's book that you suggested in one of your lives a long time ago is probably one of the most beautiful things I've ever read if you guys haven't read Matteo Tavera's book really spend your time on it there's a whole nother level here that we're only coming to understand that we ourselves are the antennas and also that we have a we have a mm, spiritual responsibility <clears throat> to the planet and that symbiosis to actually participate as antennas you have to read that book. You have to read that book. And you always go there, Yannick. You always go to that beautiful place. <laughs> I really Thank appreciate you. that. Um, I, I know that uh, Anna has a very quick question about a tower that she has in her yard. Anna, are you there? No, Anna's not there. Liliana, do you want to ask the question about the Coppola versus the tower? Yeah, I actually just uh, wanted to, um, I don't know, can I share? Yes, you can. Okay, I, I was gonna share my picture actually, cause I found a picture, it might be a good. Um, so I have a, can you guys see this? Can you Not see the picture? Yet. Yes. Oh, there. So I have a dome in the backyard. I, I have just less than an acre um, in terms of the property and the dome is 4.5 meters tall. I was just thinking now, and I also have a chain fence right behind, uh, behind it. And behind it is where I have the garden and my fruit trees. I'm wondering if if I just put an antenna, like would the dome itself be act as an antenna or would I have to add one on top of it? Uh, the, uh, <clears throat> uh, the dome itself, I don't think it works as an antenna. Um, mm -hmm. I, it, it's, it's a nice energy to live inside because uh, of the circular form and things like that is very good. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it, uh, and the structure of the dome, is it uh, wood or iron or? or uh, it's or iron. Ah, oh, yes, it's kind of iron. Ah, oh, yes. Um, um, I, it, it, it participates to the harmony of the place. In, in that way, you can see it as an antenna in a certain mm-hmm. way. Uh, but, but I could um, also add right an antenna to the top, and I was thinking I could connect that to the a chain fence that I have behind it, and then it would that would like would I need more than that if I were to put an antenna on top of the dome? Well, I I think it's difficult to put an antenna on top of of such kind of of um, mm. dome. Um, I would put an antenna. Um, away of the dome because if the antenna falls down it will it will damage your dome so that would be a pity yeah. <laughs> mm. so uh, I, I would put it away from the dome um, uh, yes and, and and maybe connect it to your fans like you tell or to and you, you put the antenna in the place where you cultivate your crops the okay. closer the 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 the, the, the b- better but i would put if it's the place there where you play and where you live uh, close to the dome maybe you can put a round tower a round tower that will increase the schumann waves too and the schumann waves are very good uh for um uh, for telepathy and for also our well-being oh, wow. uh, and, uh, and and relaxation and uh, our energies too. So uh, that would be increase. That will increase the good energies of your garden too. <laughs> okay, that's you, really cool. You are speaking to the right people. Let me just tell you. <laughs> okay, for Rob, sure. Thank you. Yeah, Rob, and then Anna, and then we'll let Yannick continue with his life. <laughs> Oh, Rob. Uh, if you... um, so Liliana, um, I've got the exact same dome that you do. Ooh. So yeah, I would love to come out and see what you've done with yours. For sure. um, as you were describing it, I was I was thinking, and um, <coughs> maybe I can can confirm this. If we put the antenna outside of the dome, so it's not going to be affixed to the dome. And because the dome structure is made from steel tubing, we might just all we have to do is just take um electrical wire and then just connect it to any one of the footings because the entire dome is all tied together right so it becomes like a a mesh anyways um so yeah um i I don't know if that's going to help my my two questions were uh one was uh when we're building our antennas does it matter if the radials like the little fingers that go on top do they have to be spikes or can I make them as loops? And the second half of it is earlier in your presentation, you had a picture that showed um, uh, negatively charged um, energy um, coming from the soil and going up through the antenna and out the radials. So my question there is, is the antenna um, trying to make the soil less negative and more positive and so it's getting rid of the negative energy or is it acting as a collection device and bringing it down and putting it into the soil so those are my two questions yeah so about uh, the question of the spikes or the loops it's also a question i have (laughs) (laughs) okay uh, uh uh, there is uh, uh, Nikola Tesla. He he uh, he has a patent about a lighting rod that is a ball, and he said yeah. it works a lot better than spikes. <laughs> so yeah. uh, that can be one element of of the answer. Uh, but when we look at churches, things like this, we see spikes and we see balls. We see the two. <laughs> so. Um, 
I think uh, uh, we. I think it would be very interesting to to do the ex experiments and to uh, to compare if we if we can if we have a garden that makes that possible to compare. Then we make an antenna with a ball on top, for example, or loops, mm -hmm. and another with uh, spikes. They will. I think they will work. The two will work, but maybe one will work a lot better than the other. Uh, but uh, I'm sure the two will work. Uh, but uh, 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 one will probably work better than the other. With with the loops and with balls, you you can uh, communicate a lot more uh, charges, electrical charges uh, uh, on top. But it radiates uh, less um, of of uh, of electrons. The electron stays on the ball or on the loop. It it doesn't radiate. It doesn't uh, go away. So, and when okay. we speak, oh yes, on 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 the on the second question. Uh, so it it responds also to the second question. So when we speak about the electrical charge and, and negative, it's not negative in the way that it's it's not good for plants. No, it's about a negative charge because it's electrons. The symbol is the negative uh, symbol and positive charge is is positive symbol. Uh, but uh, I don't really see it as uh, charges. I see it more as fluctuations of energy fields. You can see it like this. Uh, when you look at the work of Nikola Tesla, for example, and others, they they even don't speak about electrons. For them, electrons doesn't exist. We we are living in dire dia electrical fields and magnetic fields, like energy fields. But but it's not really electrons that are flowing it's like a light it's uh, like a kind of energy field but it's not uh, like a, a bucket of photons that you can collect <laughs> and you can uh, uh, throw back or something no uh, that's the materialistic uh, way of 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 explain things of our physics today that wants to put an object on every energy so they then they invent electrons they invent uh, photons they invent uh, um, uh, for magnetism they invent um, magnetons or, or things like this uh, but uh, I I don't think uh, life is or or the the real the reality I don't think it 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 works like this. <laughs> uh, I I think more and more about energy fields. So each um, each object will create a kind of energy field or antenna effect, and. Uh, uh, um, like an example to 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 uh, go about the the dome structure it's it's a nice energy field everybody likes that mostly and 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 but i i would not connect i don't feel i just intuition but i don't feel to put an antenna with spikes on that uh, kind of uh, structure i would put this away of it it's like yeah. two different energies completely different and uh, it would be more in harmony to put it uh, away from each other and probably mm -hmm. it creates like a communication between the two but uh, it's uh, different it's like you see with with pyramids you have the pyramid and then you have obelisk that are always not far away from it but it's not on top of the pyramid it's uh, it's yes. uh, it's not far away of it and when we look at plants it's also interesting because all those antennas we can find back in the form of the plants if you look at a leak it's uh, like a point and then you have the flower it's a ball but it's all all points also it's uh, you have the two uh, you have balls and you have a uh, 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 kind of little hairs also on the on the leaves of the plant if you look at the tree it's a ball or like a, 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 a dome a tree uh, 
But if you look closer to a leaf of the tree, then you, you see a lot of little hairs. Even our head, it's a ball, and then we have the hair. <laughs> oh, I just have the no. ball, no hair. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have only the ball. <laughs> OK, let's, let's go to Anna for our final question. OK, thanks, Yannick. Um, so hopefully this is a quick uh, question, but I have a telephone pole. Um, as you were talking about all these towers and things, I have a telephone pole right in the northwest corner of my um, backyard, which is where I'm doing all my growing. It's not a big backyard. It's 60 by 40 um, feet. So that's what, 18 by 16 meters. Um, and the telephone wire goes underneath um, like the property all the way across. So like um, when, when Bell Canada set up their infrastructure, they went through everybody's backyard. Um, and uh, so I have this wire that is going under there. I'm wondering, does that affect the growth of my, um, in my yard? Is that affecting it? No, I don't think. Uh, no, the wire under the soil of, of a phone, uh, of the telephone, I don't think this will affect um, uh, your garden. I don't think that's not a problem. That is not a okay. problem, mostly. And and the pool that is on the north, uh, northeast or west, you tell uh, of your garden that it's not so a problem because it's in the north. So you can put your antenna on the south. An okay. example, uh, when uh, if, if the pool would be on the south, it can be more a problem in the in the in the way that uh, uh, then you you need to put your antenna also on the south, but higher or or uh, uh, so yeah, you I can't go need, higher. Uh, you, you, I wouldn't be cannot, able to go higher, you know. Yes, not you cannot city. go higher. It's normal. It's, it's very high mostly, but um, so like it's in the north, it's not uh, really a problem. Okay. Because it's okay. like when when. Uh, when you have seen the picture, the drawing of, of the antenna close to a tree, you see that the antenna is always put on the south side of the tree uh, and, and not on the north side. Uh, I, I forgot to tell this uh, during the presentation, but the, the antenna is always put it on the south side. So if, if the tree would be on the south side and the antenna on the north side, it will not really work very well. So it's like you have your your pole, the telephone pole is on the north side, so it will not take the energy of the south. You see, it, uh, it's not a problem. Okay, so, and okay. so if I put my antenna, um, like say, maybe in the center, like of the garden, yes. but at the south side, um, then I should be able to utilize that energy. I should be able to create that field. Yes over my over my garden and then it'll hook up to the telephone pole is that right yes, in your garden maybe if you put a, one antenna in the middle maybe it covers your whole garden uh, if it's high enough yes yeah okay uh, yeah. thank you yes how, how high would you suggest baby because it's not uh, a big area the, the the highest you can go easily it's uh, around six meters high uh, or so yeah that's if, if that's you want to high. cover your wall garden i would say six meters and otherwise if it's four meters then i would put like two or three in the garden okay mm, for example but okay even thank if you it's six meters you can put uh, also two if you want uh, but, uh, but but probably it will already cover uh a big part of your garden mm. okay if you want to go higher than six meters then it become mm. a lot more difficult to do uh, so it's 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 more easy to put more little antennas than one very high antenna uh, okay mm. yeah thank you so much 
Thank yes, you too. thank you so much for this another amazing lecture on atmospheric antennas. Uh, where are we moving to next week, Yannick? What do we move to next week? About the round tower. Okay. We'll speak about the round tower. It's also okay. amazing. <laughs> it is also amazing. Thank you for bringing all this amazingness to all of us. We're so grateful for you and we're so appreciative of your time. Thank you very, very much. It's a big Thank pleasure and uh, really, um, it's a big pleasure to see that in, in the English part of the world, uh, electroculture is really developing now. And, uh, and, and that's also why I want to do those presentations to, to, to bring my little work uh, <laughs> and to spread it. Uh, I, has, I was thinking about uh, someone I know that maybe uh, is living close uh, uh, to Toronto or in Ontario, mm -hmm. where from, from who I learned a lot about uh, minerals and the energy of minerals and fertilization. And his name is Alan Reed. Maybe some know about him, uh, but I can put you in contact with him. Uh, and he is also uh, a guy that is very passionate about uh, rocks a lot, and, and he can tell uh, really a lot of things about this. It's really amazing. He told me that each rock, uh, each uh, rock uh, gives a kind of oil. It's not only yeah. the oil like we know, but each uh, different rock, if you if, if, if you wrap with your fingers, you will feel that there is like a kind of oil or something. Yeah. And, that, that, and he told that the plants are nourishing also from that. Uh, 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 it's a really, I didn't know about this before he told me that. <laughs> it's a really very interesting. He knows really a lot. Uh, and I hope, I, I think it would be really nice to, to put you in contact with um uh so i will uh, i will send you his uh or what the, if i find find his phone again i will send you uh, uh or his email but it's not easy to go in contact with him but uh because he is a little bit uh, wild he 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 likes to live in his farm or in nature and not much with uh, all that uh, high technology <laughs> Well, but, as uh, you know, Yannick, I am very persistent, and we will find him. <laughs> yeah, yes, I think it, it's really a nice, uh, nice guy too. Very interesting. Thank so, you. So, thank you very much. We'll see you um, again next time. See you thank again. You. Thank you, Yannick.